Pop Culture Pastor. So if Pop Culture Pastor, watch alongs, was immortalized in wooden totem poles or beams or whatever those were. I don't even know what those were. They, they appeared to be like totems. Yeah, yes, they did. Um, Matt would be balder <laughs> because no one even knows who he is. No, no, but yeah, Cody's not that tall in real life. <laughs> Cody's Thor and I'm Loki. I'm not even represented. <laughs> I don't know who Odin would be. Um, now, wait a minute. That would probably be DJ, even though he hasn't <laughs> been on this particular watch alongs yeah. ever. I so. don't know if we could ever have DJ on watch alongs because every episode would be like an hour and a half long. Yeah. He would, he would. And, but he would fit Odin's son. <laughs> the All Father. Yes. I do have a son named Thor. Would that not make me Odin? I kind of. But my personality doesn't fit. Yeah. So. But it does. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it, you're, since you're still kind of new ish. Yeah. I spe- wanna... Especially to her, for an every episode kind of stretch, you got to be balder. And I... that line from Loki is just fantastic. It's like, no one even knows who he is. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, who is this? I know who balder <laughs> was because I liked Norse mythology and I read books. Uh, but and and I uh, read Marvel comics and Balder was you know he was in there occasionally, a little bit. But the MCU has chosen not to use Balder, yeah, correct. Which is like, look, you're not missing that much. Well, not true. They did use Balder. When in Loki, yes, <laughs> season, <laughs> season two, <laughs> two, episode three. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. Um, welcome. This is Pop Culture Pastor Watch Alongs. Uh, I'm Dave. Cody's here. Doing smooth jazz. And Matt Bogle <laughs> is here. The the Matt, the the balder of the pop culture pastor watch along crew. <laughs> yep. Um and no, just kidding, Matt. You are a valuable member in addition. No, it's I'm uh I'll be I'll be balder. I'll okay. Be good with it. Um, so we've got uh, episode three of season two of Loki, and um I'm gonna full disclosure, I was really busy this past week. And I watched this episode uh, like late at night Mm. and I was very tired and I'd already taken like my allergy medicine. So I felt like it was, it was, I I can't, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know is if the episode is loopy or if I was loopy, it all felt loopy. Yeah. It was a little loopy. It was a really strange episode. Like it definitely fits with some fandoms. So I think if you are a fan of the Loki series and you also like shows and movies that do some time traveling, it was right up your alley. Yeah, we it gets okay, yeah. So like it's like a the Doctor Who fandom. Yes. Would like this stuff. It was not what I expected though for basically a mid season show. How many episodes of this, this are there? Uh is there seven or eight? I don't recall. I feel it might be eight. You look it up, Cody, while while we're talking. Cody is the master of looking, Googling things while we're recording. Um, As we get into this episode, we just kind of start off. I mean, we just go. We hit the ground running in 1868. Yeah. Which, um, uh, and, and, and right back in with Ravona Renslayer, who we haven't seen. We've heard her. But we haven't seen her yet. This is the first time we see her this season. It's only going to be six. So this is the halfway point. That is wild. Only six episodes. That, is, well, that was what the first season was, though, I think. Well, I think it was six. You better start hitting some home runs. Episodes yeah, four, yeah. five, and six. I am not happy you told me it was six because now I think my enjoyment of this episode just went down a little bit. Ouch. Because I'm, I'm a little concerned. And that's why I wasn't thinking that, but but I did look when I was watching, and that's what made me think this is like this is mid season. This yeah. is what we got. Yeah, it was so. It's weird. It's it was a weird episode for me. Uh, Ravona's back. She's in nineteen or excuse me, eighteen sixty eight. She's meeting Miss Minutes. Miss Minutes has been absent as well, and well, you know we'll get to this later on. But she's super creepy in this episode, and uh, Ravona. By the way, it's important to note that in 1868, the little graphic at the bottom of the screen says the sacred timeline. 
So this is 1868, the sacred timeline. She's there to drop off a TVA guidebook written by Ouroboros, written by OB, our guy, um, yeah. to the guy who you're sub, you're led to believe will become he who remains. I mean, maybe we're not told that exactly, but I think that's the thing. What you need to know is he's Victor Timely. Yeah. Who is, looks like he who remains. He looks like he's a Kang. Um, but I have questions because it's 1868 and wasn't Kang from like the 30th century. But if you, do you know the twist, the comic book twist? Do you know the Victor Timely? Uh, yeah. There was a series on that. You okay. Know that, right. So uh, let's, all right. Let's go through the Marvel explanation of who Victor Timely is because I, I could, I could tell you. I mean, Victor Timely in the comics was Kang. Right. He was Kang Prime. So Kang, um, is from the year he's born in the year 3000 and he, tra- he travels all over, I think, but then he goes back in time cause he gets bored. Right. And so he goes back to like ancient Egypt, which you saw, we saw references to in moon Knight to Rama Tut. Um, he goes all over the place. He gets defeated in Egypt by the fantastic four for, I don't know what they were doing back there. Um, <laughs> fantastic four things. He goes forward to like the 40th century, and it's bleak, and he assumes the name King the Conqueror there in the comics. But then, you know, like he he places himself as Victor Timely in the early 19th century, the or excuse me, the early 20th century. Right. In the comics. But he's never not Kang. He's Kang in disguise in the comics. Right. He was still correct. He was still uh, the prime or what would you like to call it? Kang prime. Yeah. He's right. Kang prime. Cause he didn't, he, he, he could not defeat the Avengers. So we, he went back to change history. Right. 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 So he's trying to, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it gets con- like, as you might imagine, the comic books get pretty convoluted with Kangs and Kang variants, just like, right. You know, what would happen anywhere you use multiverse stuff. And I assume this is going to be pretty convoluted, but the weird part is, is the, that she goes to the sacred timeline to drop off this guidebook to a young boy who is Victor in 1868. Right. Then, and here's where it gets weird, when they show up, Loki and Mobius, in 1893, isn't that the year they come into? Well, they They're first get there at 1868, 1868 which for right. just a moment. I don't know how they would miss them if you're time traveling back to that exact moment. Yeah, I need to know these readings on the temp pad they're picking up and yeah. why it's not exact. So, yeah, that was that was interesting, but yeah, 1893 is where they do their damage. Okay, so th- then they go to 1893 when they realize they've missed Ravona and Miss Minutes in 1868. And here's where it's interesting. When they go to 1893, it says branched timeline. So whatever Ravona has done in the sacred timeline has created a branch timeline. Yes. Okay. So like, you're still with us here. Mm-hmm. I, and look, I'll admit. So the first season of Loki, I was all over it. I was the one who predicted. Like we, were, we weren't doing this pod yet. But you, if you know me, you know I was predicting Kang showing up at some point in the show and everybody thought I was crazy. And I was like, no man, this is perfect stuff to, to have Kang come into. And I was right. Um, it was like Mephisto watch during Scarlet, Witch. yeah. Or WandaVision. Yeah. yeah. It was Kang watch. And, <laughs> yeah. and I think I hit it before Nerdist. Even Nerdist got on board later, but I was from like episode one. I'm like, I'm looking for any signs of Kang. Cause Kang's one of my favorite characters. Oh. Flash forward to this season. I have no idea what's going on. I have no Time idea. Travel. Like, look, uh, Jonathan majors who, you know, we're not going to talk about any of his real world stuff. He gives a very interesting performance. Like it's, oh, he, he's captivating in a way that few actors I could possibly, uh, put forward can do. Like he just captures your attention. It's a very weird portrayal. Wasn't what I was expecting. Not that I didn't like it. Yeah. I was captivated. But at the same time, he's like a swindler. He's like a con man. 
but he does have some intelligence. Like he's, he has a line at some point in the episode where he's all like, well, I have all these ideas, but I just don't have the technology. And I'm just like, okay, but is he who remains come from a branch timeline? I'm, I'm lost. I, my, now my crackpot theory in episode one was the multiversal war, war hasn't happened yet. Yeah. And so this would fit that, I suppose. But I'm not following the timey wiminess. <laughs> Are you, is anyone else? Am I the only one? Um, so instead of like, if we use back to the future logic, like her dropping off the book would alter uh, it forever. Instead, there is still the, the prime branch, but now her dropping off the book has created an alternate branch on the prime branch instead of just forever changing the prime branch. Okay. And so um, they're using not back to the future logic. Okay. Well, I'm lost. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Ravona and Miss Bennett are working together, obviously. They drop off the book. Timely is allegedly a, a variant or he who remains. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Nobody's saying the name Kang. I know that for sure. And um, I am. He's clearly not a conqueror. <laughs> that's that's what we know. Not yet. So well, and was he who remained? Was he not what we call Kang? Is this this this, this is my thought? Is this Victor Timely? The king that we will know. Well, I I think everyone assumed that that king was the one in Ant Man. He so the king in Quantum Mania addresses himself as King the Conqueror. Yes. Yeah. So I think everybody assumed that that was the king that is the Conqueror. He who remains is it was sort of a in a comic book sense was sort of a glomming together of a character named Immortus. And another character who was he who remains. Now, that's that was your best guess at the time. But since then, the in credit scene in Quantum Mania with all the Kangs clearly showed in Immortus, I believe. And so now we're you're like, okay, I'm not really sure who he who remains is, other than just he who remains in the MCU. Yeah. Anyways, the guy at the end of the timeline. All of this conjecture. Is like unimportant because they can really just go whichever direction they want with this. And um, I I don't know. Well, I'll save how I feel about it for later. Okay. Um, So Loki and the gang are trying to uh, free themselves from this. uh, His the he who remains vision of the TVA. Right. They're trying. The TVA is going through this process of maybe reinventing themselves. And this is where um, Loki and he, uh, Loki and Mobius show up looking for Ravona or Miss Minutes to be more specific. Then they figure out that Ravona is in on this. And that's kind of where this episode starts. And it's just like this big adventure, right? Through World's Fair 1893 Chicago. And um, it's all kind of cool. The, you know, It's a cool background. Yeah. I mean, the period piece stuff, is it's all kind of fun and neat. The, the intro at the beginning with the Marvel logo and the old-timey music, that was fun. Um, but it, it feels like it was one giant set piece, right? Kind of like one giant action thriller-type set piece. Uh, in the past and cause you know, like OB, uh, Casey and Hunter B 15, they're not really in this episode a whole lot to, so to speak, um, other than like, you know, the last time ons. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, Loki Mobius in the 1893 world's fair, they run into what we saw from the trailers before the season. They see him on the stage as Victor timely. He's got, uh, a version of the temporal loom on the stage. And you're thinking, uh, you're thinking the same thing. Loki was thinking, you're like, Oh, this is the guy. Yeah. This guy's bad. This guy's Kang. And, but then we quickly find out that Victor is a shyster. He's, he's just conning people. And he's like selling this loom that doesn't do anything. Yeah. yeah. 
It um, sparks. Yeah. And um, for Ravona, I'm not really sure what her motivation is. Cause we're still waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, well, it, uh, a position of power. Yeah. Because she, she kind of reveals her hand a little bit towards the end of the episode with uh, Owen Wilson being like, I've carried you and fixed your mistakes for all these years, and I got no thanks or gratitude. Without me, the TVA's falling apart. I mean, but we're, are we led to believe that she had a relationship with He Who Remains? I believe that. So. that's we're, They're leading us down that path. I don't know if it's real, but. My crackpot theory we'll get to oh, at okay. the end of oh, this. Okay. All right, all right. Um, I want to steal that. <laughs> so. Victor uh, says he's not interested in having partners, which is intriguing. And um, he's just he's just a con man. In fact, they he calls him a Loki calls him a confidence uh, something, not a man, right? A confidence something. I don't know. He uses a some funny language for it, but he's a con man. Yeah, Victor Timely, and he uh, uh, things get complicated as they're chasing him around when Sylvie shows up who apparently gets time off from the Mickey D's to go hopping through time. Or is this, this would it'd be interesting. The timey wimey's got me all theory all over the place though, because could this be the Sylvie, a uh, Sylvie from the future? Could this be not the Sylvie who just left the timeline with them, who got mad because she was still mad at the TVA, but could this be a TVA from further down the line or TVA? Sorry, Sylvie from further down the line. May, maybe, but I, I don't, they didn't, I think maybe some time has passed for her because, and I may be getting ahead of myself here, but that she, uh, well, I'm going to get ahead of myself here. That she, she, she doesn't kill him. Um, Victor Timely, she makes that decision. You know, that there's that whole, um, um, do I, uh, I think I seen some uh, podcast say, do I, did I, do I kill baby Hitler to save? Yeah. You know, that, that theory. Well, she's clearly on board with the killing. I mean, she's trying to kill Victor Timely and she, all she cares about is like, this is clearly a variant of he who remains and she's just going to kill all the variants. So I don't think it's, if it's a future her, it's not that far into the future. That's because what I'm going with Cody. she's still like she's tracking them to get to uh, the people that should know where Kang is. Yeah. Okay. I I don't know. I, this episode was fine. I was in for the ride. Um, but like I find that the weirdness of it and the timey wimeyness of it kind of takes us off of what I thought were some really cool, deep themes that they had kind of introduced. Like we talked a little bit about them in the last couple of watch alongs episodes, which I can't say that I'm all for the character building episodes last the in like the last watch along we did and then not be kind of on board for this. I mean, I was, it was interesting, but I don't know if this is my favorite kind of episode um, because I just don't, I don't know that I have enough understanding of what's going on. And I feel like they're playing fast and loose with us well, a little it's bit. Yeah. Not a one episode resolution arc. No. No, and, you're right. And so I do think definitely by the end of this this season, you'll have a good idea of what's going on. But um I I can't guarantee that you will by the end of episode four. Maybe this would be a better way to put it. Maybe this would be a better way to pose the question. Um is the p- part of the problem with some of these Disney plus shows like the M- MCU stuff, the Marvel stuff is that this would work better as a full movie and they're just like dividing it into six parts. Um, no. Cause if re- honestly, it felt like a doctor who episode. Okay. Yeah. See, this is where and you lose me because I'm not a doctor who guy, but I heard, I've heard people say that. And so like, there is a main plot that's being played out in a cool, like either historical or future uh, setting. And the setting can sometimes be a little bit distracting, Um, but like it all 
loops together. There's okay. a golden thread that will eventually be revealed. And it's like, I should have saw that. Yeah. For me right now, Victor Timely is completely an enigma. Um, I don't know if he's just so a dude. He like, I didn't know if they were trying to do like a Nikola Tesla. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Type thing with him. But then like the way Jonathan Majors portrays him, there's some weird quirks that like, I don't know if you're trying to say he's been electrocuted too much. If he's gone through some trauma, <laughs> um, if he might have a, um, like a learning disability or something, but like the, just the way he's talking is interesting. Are you thinking like autism? Uh, that had entered my mind originally and I'm like, maybe, but at times like, again, not all people that are on the autism spectrum disorder have the same, uh, symptoms, but like he, he right. makes pretty good eye contact at yeah. times. So I, I, there was a few things that it's like, well, it could be this, but then it kind of led me away from being that. And so, yeah. I, th I think they tried to make connections to Howard Stark and Tony Stark as well. Yeah. Well, so yes. you got the I mean, whole it's... World's Fair thing going on. And in the 18, in the World's Fair in Chicago, I mean, Edison was there. These people were there. And so, like, it all has this good feel and it feels right. Yeah. And Victor Timely feels like a kind of a Tesla kind of guy. Um, but I just, I don't know. I feel like, I'm, I guess I'm a little worried that Marvel's trying to pull a fast one. That the writers are trying to pull a fast one on us. And I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that I like it. I wanted him to be he who remains. I wanted him yeah. to be this guy. Um, what would be weird and amazing at the same time is if, like, the, the house that he shows up at or that the books dropped off at is not his house. He just knows like he's somehow related to this family. And it's mm. like, I'm just going to show up, grab yeah. it, flash forward, pretend that I am this aloof genius. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Miss Minutes for a second. Miss Minutes is legitimately creepy in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> legitimately creepy. Ravona uh, escapes with Victor timely. They get away from the clutches of Loki and Mobius and Sylvie and uh, Ravona and Miss Minutes and, and Victor all go uh, off together. But Ravona gets kind of played uh, by Miss Minutes yeah. who convinces Victor to, to jettison Ravona. Um, so during this moment, I'm, I'm having some Doctor Who flashbacks as like it keeps progressing with Miss Minutes and Victor. Because there's one p episode in Doctor Who, and I know this isn't a Doctor Who podcast, so I apologize. But like the TARDIS, which is the police phone box that all Doctor Who merchandise has on it, uh, that is the time machine. It becomes personified and you get a physical person representation. And that's where Miss Minutes kind of leads to, is she wants to be not just an AI yeah. virtual Give me clock. a body. Okay, okay. Yeah, but this is where it gets weird. She's, like, in love yeah. yes. with He Who Remains. And the part where she, like, puts her face on the mannequin, I was just like, oh, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel, but I feel weird. That's how I felt. It <laughs> Awkward. Uh, just like, <laughs> like, I don't like this. This is, <laughs> this is some weird uh, AI. Like everything, every movie you've ever seen about AI going amok. Yeah. I got all those feels. Where is <laughs> Sarah and John? And you need them. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I wasn't really expecting. Um, before things get too creepy, Ravona and Sylvie both show up. Because uh, Miss Minutes wants a, we get that revelation right before they show up. Victor is is again at the center of this kind of conflict. Um, but now you've got Ravona and Sylvie who kind of want him dead because Ravona's not real pleased. And then Loki and Mobius show up and and intervene and and things simmer down a little bit. Uh, but this time it's Victor who kind of persuades things. 
and it gets him through a time door and away from trouble. And Sylvie seems to finally be realizing that saving timelines from falling apart maybe is a good thing. And, uh, uh, but she, she seems like she's not being friends with him. And then the whole episode kind of ends on this weird note between, um, Miss Minutes and Ravona. Cause Ravona's, Ravona's mad. She's angry. Yeah. And Miss Minutes is like, do you want to be really angry? I'm just like, well, what's happening now? That leads to Cody's crackpot theory. Yeah. yeah. So like, look, <laughs> We've done this about as far as we can. I mean, there's not a lot to break down. It was like there's, a big action set piece. Um, we get a couple I, revelations I with Miss Minutes. Sylvie actually has some character development that I was wanting to see because she could have killed uh, Ravona, yeah. but she doesn't. Uh, she's like, I've killed you a hundred times in my dreams, each time more brutal than the last, and it hasn't done me any good. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. You guys have talked about you wanted. I think you said you wanted more action, or you, I don't remember one of you said I want more action, and I want he who he who remains, and I want Ravona. You got all of those. This and and I and I was thinking, man, they got everything, but it's not any of it. Matt, Matt, I think um, what you're missing is I want to know what's going on. <laughs> That's what I, I don't like not knowing. The, oh, I love it. Can I can I get so? We eventually we'll get to the point. I keep trying to hold off on this. That where you want? What do you not like about this episode? Yeah, and that's where I want to get to. Okay, all right, all right, so. all right. Well, let's just let's just move on here. Like, real quickly, what's your what's good about this episode, Cody? Uh, I'll save the crackpot for later. Okay, um, what's good? Just very broadly, let's just say what's good. Jonathan Majors. Ah oh, man, I, I whisper know. into the mic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't really. I mean, yeah, uh, Matt. What's good about this episode? Uh, what's good about this episode would, uh, it was, it was, I liked seeing Owen Wilson be Mm. the, the, uh, Owen Wilson, um, you know, that he's going on his little adventure Yeah, and Loki's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, let's look here. He might be over here. Man, his Cracker Jacks is real good. I love that (laughs) Owen Wilson is at the point in his career where he's just always Owen Wilson. Yeah, I love that. Like he's Mobius in the Marvel universe, but Mobius is Owen Wilson. He's right. just got that Owen Wilsony vibe to him, which, frankly, I love because I'm a big fan of Wes Anderson stuff and uh, just Owen Wilson in general. And so I dig that. And um, the, the Baldur's in it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> sort of as a large wooden totem. Um, I, I will echo what Cody said. I mean, Jonathan Majors is is brilliant. And he's just, like I said earlier, he, he just is so captivating whenever he's on screen. And Victor Time, he's so weird. Like, in, in a, I had a vision. I had 20 visions of how I thought he could play Victor Timely. He comes out and does something completely out of what my expectation was, and I'm still captivated by it. Um, but yet, it's hard to talk about him because he might still be very problematic. We just don't know. And so that yeah. hanging over it kind of sours it. I'm going to say Tom Hiddleston. I think Tom Hiddleston was glorious from the moment he sees Victor Timely and he's like, that's him. We saw that in the trailers and I it's seeing it is just wonderful because he's playing that part so well. And with the scenes with Victor Timely, Tom Hiddleston does a great job of still being this great actor, but he pulls back. He lets, he lets majors take over the scene, right? You know, it's good stuff. And they've kept Loki, in his magical abilities in yeah. this episode. Yeah. So we get two straight episodes. Yeah. Cody, what's bad? What's not so good about this? Episode? Um, how do they have a carving of Thor <laughs> when he hadn't been to earth until the incident in Thor one? Yeah. yeah. Well, he would have no, had to have been there before no, that's, because that's true. It, the, our whole Norse mythology is based on them. Right. right? He said, I haven't been yeah, here. I, it doesn't match up. I know you're right. I You're right. But you just assume that they, we go maybe back, we go back to Thor one and yeah, you shouldn't have put that in. The maybe script. Thor one isn't on the perfect timeline. Maybe it's on <laughs> a different one. I mean, to be fair, it's a branch timeline. Yeah. Who knows what you could see? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That's why Baldur exists. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Loki didn't. Loki doesn't think anyone knows who Balder is, but in this branch timeline, Balder is the rage. That's right. <laughs> Balder the brave. All right, Matt, what's not so good about this episode? Not so good about this episode. Um, that I like, when I watch shows, I like to be a good detective. And I like to go in my head that um, I've got a theory. Mm-hmm. And it may be right, wrong, or indifferent. But this is, this is a mid-season show, and I have no idea. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like uh, I can't truly put a, put a, oh, it's going to roll this way. We're going to go this direction. Yeah. And, and I don't like that. Usually in, like, so, so in past Disney Plus stuff, when it's like a six-episode arc, episode four is usually a big, giant episode. Like, usually something groundbreaking happens in episode four of a six-episode arc. I'm just saying that's the pattern. And I have a hard time believing that that's going to happen because there's so much here to explain still. We have no idea really what's going on with Victor Thomas. But it could be a good sign that this will keep on keeping on. I am, and I agree with that. I'll, I'll hit that when we rate the episode. Um, because just because it's confusing to me doesn't mean that's necessarily a bad thing because part of the problem for IP lately has been, it's all fan service and nobody seems to like that. Like you're not surprising us and then you're not putting in the most important stuff. Like you're going to fan service us and then you're not going to give us the story we want. Looking at you secret invasion. Um, okay. I'm giving Cody the crackbot theory of the week this week because Sweet. I didn't really have anything because I was so confused and I'm still thinking about the story. Cody, what is the crackpot theory of the week? Okay. So I think Ravona, two things. Okay. One is she is like the original Kang's wife and okay. she gets plucked out and gets. Her mind wiped. So, so and- forget about He Who Remains. She might be in with the original King the Conqueror. I think that she is either with He Who Remains or King the Conqueror. Whatever. One of those. One of those people. And she is then plucked out and made to forget her okay. position of power and, and authority. And that's happened in the comic books. Ooh. So not super crackpot. She was a romantic interest of the Kang, the Conqueror, in the comic books, but it had nothing to do with the TVA. She wasn't related to any of that. No. So my other one is she's a Kang variant, and we're getting a Loki-Sylvie relationship, but within the Kangs. Okay. That has some symmetry. I can see that. And I thought... I'm a little like, ooh, am I thinking like Cody? But what's going on here? <laughs> I thought that I wondered that as well. I was like, hmm, crackpot. Do they want to the go that weird again, though? Yes. <laughs> no, they just like making us feel awkward. <laughs> oh, this uh, Kang's in love with himself too. This is wonderful. It's, um, it's not weird at all. Well, I mean, if Loki is the loser version in every timeline. Okay. You have to have a winning conqueror version. Counterpoint. I just came up with my own crackpot theory. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Sylvie is not actually a variant of Loki. She's pretending to be a variant of Loki. She's, She's a actually a variant of the Enchantress, who is, is in Thor stories as an Asgardian. And I'm basing that solely on what she says to Loki at the, at the season finale of uh, season one. When she just before she kicks him through the time door, she says, "I'm not you." That's all I'm bit crackpot theory. She's actually not a variant Ooh. of Loki. Um, I, like I thought this. you were going based solely off Marvel Snap. <laughs> no, that, no, 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 no. <laughs> that there is an enchantress card. <laughs> <laughs> there is an enchantress card, and then there's a Sylvie variant of the enchantress card. Dun, dun, dun. Where it's actually Sylvie, but it's the Enchantress. I'm, I'm just saying, D- Dave. If you if you nail this, dude, you should play the lottery. No, <laughs> I'm just that good. I'm just <laughs> name it and claim it. <laughs> All right, Cody. Okay, how good. many Infinity Stones out of ten do you give this episode? 
eight and a half, but it could be lowered down if this doesn't connect well oh, next yeah, episode. Right. It's really hard to give this episode a rating, Matt. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to split it. Uh, I would, I would give it an eight for the backdrop, the feel of it, but I'm going to give it a six because I don't know where it's going and I don't like that we're mid season and I feel yeah. It's a scary thing. I I get that. I get the apprehension of like, I felt like, because I'm trying to explain the way I felt when I was watching the episode and by the end of the episode. And yeah, I get that. I enjoyed the period piece stuff. It was all great. It was all fun. But at the same time, I'm a little nervous that I feel like the story hasn't moved very far and we're already halfway through the season. That's, that's what I'll say. Actually, here's my grade for the episode. I'm going to give it an incomplete because I feel like I need to see the next episode before I know how good this episode was. Because I feel like we're missing some information. That's that's how I feel. If you like the historical backdrop, you'll love Doctor Who. I know. I need to watch Doctor Who. This is like a weekly thing now. Dave, you should watch Doctor Who. I know he's got time for that, man. I have a hard enough time watching all the stuff we're supposed to watch. By the way, I'm pretty sure we're doing a Be Kind Rewind on this week's pod. Spoilers. Spoilers. Maybe. So there's another movie we got to watch <laughs> before before we record. Hey, uh, tell us what you thought about the episode. Did you enjoy the episode? Are you enjoying the season? Uh, who do you think Victor Timely is? Do you think he's Kang? Do you think he's a he who remains variant? Do you think he's nobody who just happens to look like him? He's everybody. <sighs> I hope we find out he's somebody <laughs> next episode. We'll see what happens. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.